Hi again, everyone. It's Dr. Khaled, one of the doctors in the UK. Today, I'm going to speak to you about a very important topic, which is atopic dermatitis or eczema. But before I speak to you about it, please, if you do like my video, support my channel by subscribing to my channel in order to receive all of the new videos on time, in addition to not to be missing anything. So today I'm going to speak to you about atopic dermatitis or eczema, and I walk you through how is it caused in addition to the treatment options according to the CKS guidelines. So let's start now. So by definition, atopic dermatitis or atopic eczema is a chronic itchy inflammatory skin condition that affects people of all ages, although it presents most frequently in childhood. In addition, it's typically an episodic disease, meaning that it happens every now and again. And it's a disease of flares that may occur as frequently as two or three times each month. It can happen also in remissions, and in severe cases, the disease activity may be continuous. So the word atopic is used to describe a group of conditions like eczema, asthma, hay fever, and food allergy that are linked by an increased activity of the allergy component of the immune system. In addition, eczema comes from the Greek word to boil and is used to describe itchy, red, dry skin, which can sometimes become weeping, blistered, crusted, scaling, and thickened. So what are the causes of atopic dermatitis or eczema? So, unfortunately, there is no known single cause for atopic eczema. It's simply a complex condition involving genetic, immunologic, and environmental factors leading to a dysfunctional skin barrier and immune system dysregulation. So what are the complications of eczema? So first of all, infection. The infection can be in the form of either bacterial infection with Staphylococcus aureus that may present with increased redness, oozing, and crusting of the skin, or herb simplex indicated by grooved vesicles and punched out erosions, or eczema herpeticum, which is simply a disseminated herb simplex virus infection it's widespread lesions that can extend over the entire body, occasionally complicated by secondary infection with Staphylococcus or Streptococcus infection. It's a medical emergency, especially in children under two years of age, and requires urgent referral. It can have serious sequelae, such as eye or meningeal involvement, resulting in scarring. So be careful about eczema herpeticum. So the complications also may include psychological or psychosocial problems such as distress and depression has been reported in both teenagers and adults with atopic eczema. Preschool children also when they tend to get atopic eczema, they have higher rates of behavioral problems such as fearfulness, dependency on their parents than unaffected children. School children also with atopic eczema have problems including time away from school, impaired performance, social restriction, teasing, and bullying. Also, that can cause poor self-image and self-confidence that can impair social development. Among children with moderate to severe eczema attending outpatient departments, psychosocial or psychological problems are double that of school children without eczema. Eczema can also cause some sort of sleep disturbance is a major problem for people with atopic eczema and their families. So how to diagnose eczema? So please take a careful history. Take a history if a patient presents with itching so the presence of itching is unlikely to be atopic eczema if there is no itch. So itching, itchiness is one of the main, main symptoms of eczema. Please never forget about that. Itchiness. The pattern, time of onset, 
and natural history of the rash. So atopic eczema usually starts in infancy and is episodic in nature, like we said earlier. You can also ask about if there is a family or personal history of atopy, such as allergic rhinitis, asthma. All of these can be associated with atopic eczema. You may also ask about if there is any allergy to any treatment. In addition, you can also ask about if there is any treatment that's tried in response and if any treatment that made any difference. You can also ask about possible trigger factors, such as any irritants or any allergens, such as soaps, detergents, and irritant clothing, such as synthetic fabrics and wool. Then you can also examine the rash. The distribution and appearance of the rash will be influenced by the person's age and the duration of the rash. So, in adults, generalized dryness and itching is a main thing. Eczema on the hands may be the primary manifestation as well. In children and adults with long-standing disease, it's often localized to the flexures of the limbs. And in infants, primarily involves the face, the scalp, and the extensor surfaces of the limb. The nappy area is usually spared, by the way. When it comes to acute eczema, it varies in appearance from poorly demarcated redness to fluid in the skin, which we call vesicles, scarring or crusting of the skin. Chronic eczema is characterized by thickened skin, resulting from repeated scratching. If eczema is weeping, crusted, or there are pustules with fever or malaise, secondary bacteria infection should be suspected or considered. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, NICE, states that atopic eczema is likely if the following criteria are fulfilled. So, itchiness plus three or more of the following. We said earlier that itchiness is one of the main, main symptoms of eczema. So, itchiness plus three or more of the following. Number one, visible flexural eczema involving the skin creases or visible eczema on the cheeks and or extensor areas in the children aged 18 months or younger. History of flexural eczema or eczema on the cheeks and or extensor areas in children aged 18 months or younger. History of dry skin in the last 12 months, history of asthma or allergic rhinitis, or history of atopic disease in a first degree relative of a child aged under four years, or signs and symptoms before the age of two years. Please note that in children of Asian Black Caribbean and Black African ethnic groups, atopic eczema can affect the extensor surfaces rather than the flexures. Investigations are not required to establish the diagnosis of atopic eczema, by the way. So management plan, when it comes to the management plan, let's speak about that. So we usually divide eczema into three main groups. So the first one is mild eczema. So the main stay of the treatment of eczema is generous amount of emollients. Please, please ask the patient to use skin emollients, not only skin emollients, but they should use generous and frequent amount of emollients and advice on frequent use, like I said. Consider a mild topical corticosteroid such as hydrocortisone 1% for areas of red skin. The treatment should be continued for 48 hours after the flare has been controlled. So, mild eczema, generous amount of emollients, advice on frequent use, consider a mild topical corticosteroid such as hydrocortisone 1% of areas of red skin. The treatment should be continued for 48 hours after the flare-up has been controlled. Number two, moderate eczema. Again, generous amount of emollients is the main say. If that's not helping, you can use moderately potent topical corticosteroids such as betamisazone, valerate, 0.025%, or clopidazone, butyrate, 
0.05% to be used on inflamed areas. Treatment should be continued again for 48 hours after the flare has been controlled. For delicate areas of skin, such as the face and flexures, consider starting with a mild potency topical corticosteroid such as hydrocortisone 1% and increase to a moderate potency corticosteroid only if necessary. The aim for a maximum of five days use. You may also try occlusive dressings or dry bandages could be of benefit. If there is severe itchiness or urticaria, consider prescribing a one-month trial of non-sedating antihistamines such as cetirizine, loratidine, or fexofenadine. In case of severe eczema, skin emollients, like I said, plus potent topical corticosteroids, for example, betamisazone, valerate 0.1% to be used on inflamed areas. Plus or minus, you can consider non-sedating antihistamines if there is severe itchiness or urticaria. If severe extensive eczema, consider a short course of an oral corticosteroid, 30 mg prednisolone taken in the morning for one week should be sufficient. Please refer children under 16 years of age if they have got eczema. So this is a fourth type of eczema, but I would say it's infection type of eczema. So we've spoken about mild, moderate and severe eczema. So this is are the main types of eczema. But now, in case if you find a person with infected eczema, what you should do. So consider the need of admission or referral Admit to the hospital if eczema herpeticum, which is widespread herpes simplex virus, is suspected. In people who are not systemically well, so don't routinely offer antibiotics for secondary bacteria infection of eczema, taking into account the extent and severity of symptoms or signs. If an antibiotic is required, please prescribe flu, cloxacillin, and that's the first line choice. Clarisomycin if the person has an allergy to penicillin. If there are localized areas of infection, consider prescribing topical fusidic acid. Consider skin plus nasal swabbing if recurrent infection is happening with a patient. So there are nice guidelines about the secondary bacterial infection of eczema and anti microbial prescribing like I spoken about earlier. You can have a look into it. You can pause the screen, have a look into it. That will be very beneficial. Also, there is a guideline about the secondary bacterial infection of eczema and the choice of antibiotics. So for people who are aged 18 years and over or people who are aged one month and over to under 18 years. So please pause the screen, have a look into it because that would be very beneficial. So when do you consider referral into a specialist? So to consider the need of immediate admission or referral if there is extensive eczema herpeticum, like I said earlier, if there is necrotizing fasciitis or sepsis is suspected. Refer to dermatology F. Diagnosis is uncertain. Current management plan hasn't controlled eczema if there is a recurrent secondary infection. Please also refer to a clinical psychologist for people who has eczema and the eczema is controlled, but the quality of life and psychological well-being haven't improved. Self-care. Self-care advice can be given to the patient on identifying trigger factors and to try to avoid them. You can use a diary. The diary is a very good method actually that will help identifying the trigger factors and consequently you can prevent um, the eczema from happening according to preventing or according to trying to identify the trigger factors and preventing um, eczema from happening. Proper use of emollients, like I said, is a mainstay. You can also provide patient information leaflets and information on eczema support groups such as the British Association of Dermatologists. Also, the National Eczema Society has various fact sheets on eczema and treatments 
available on the website. So easy score, that's a score actually that is helping in order to uh, measure the extent of the areas and the severity of atopic dermatitis. You can find that on the dermnetnz.org. So it's a very, very well useful website that you can go through it and have a look into it that will help you also um, understand and measure the extent and the severity of atopic eczema. Thank you very much, doctors, for watching my video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And please, like I said, if you do like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive all of the new videos on time. Thank you.